Welcome to worship with Riverview United Church and Nine Mile River United Church in beautiful East Hants, Nova Scotia. My name is Reverend Kim Curlin. I'm coming to you live this morning from the sanctuary that is my living room here in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. I'm so happy to be with you and hoping that a number of you can join me live. If you can't join me live, you can find us later here on Facebook. Um, or eventually will be on YouTube later today once we upload the Facebook video. So grateful that you can be here with us, with us this morning. I'm going to give folks a few minutes to find us as I give you some announcements about what's been happening for us in our community and, and uh, all around. And so for the latest on uh, the information about what's happening with Riverview and Nine Mile River United Churches, please be sure to sign up for our e-newsletter that you can find on our Facebook page or also on our website at elmsdalecooperativeministry.com. That's our new website that's under construction, so be patient with us. The fonts are sometimes hard to read, and, and we're working out a few kinks. Actually, let's, let's not lie. There's no we. I'm working out a few kinks as I learn to create a, a new website for you and really enjoying that. And so welcome to all of you this morning as you come and prepare our hearts and our minds for worship here this morning. It is a full worship service. I'm delighted to let you know that we do have some accompaniment today in the form of of the Voices United and More Voices CDs. We did get our one license, and so that's very exciting. I see lots of folks coming in now, and good morning to you all. Glad that you're with us. We're just in the announcements time of our service as we all gather here. I'll remind you that twice daily there will be uh, posts on our Facebook page, usually live from me, a uh, morning reflection and an evening meditation. If they're not live, there will be something that will be scheduled for you each and every day. At 10 a.m. is a morning reflection that has something to do with scripture and a reading and always a prayer. And then in the evening, we have an evening meditation that's usually a guided relaxation or guided meditation from possibly an interfaith tradition of some kind. A lot of the times it's yoga because it's coming from me who is a yoga teacher as well as a minister. And so I'm so grateful for all of you that have been joining me there twice a day. And it's a wonderful opportunity, not just for me to be able to share with, with you. I, I take so much joy in preparing those things with you and it's great for us to be there together. Uh, but it's also a wonderful time for us to come into community. And when we share the comments on those after those reflections and, and meditations, it's a way for all of us to realize that we are really together in this. So I'm going to let you know about a time for kids that has been popped up on our Facebook earlier this morning that comes to us from our friends at St. John's United Church in Fall River. The wonderful Dana Party is on there and it's a really cool Sunday school moment for kids. So if your kids are not interested in sitting through an hour service listening to just me, I do have a children's time though, so hang around till then. And then uh, there's a Sunday school opportunity for them a little later on if you want to pop back in and see that video. The other thing that I'll let you know is that acknowledgements for today's prayers and hymns will appear in the description of this video once it's saved live. And I want to thank everyone that shared their gifts of poetry, of liturgy, of song, whom we've borrowed from today. So as we come into this worship time, let us gather with our acknowledgement of place. Oh, before we do that, before we do that, I also want to let you know if you didn't get your e-newsletter this morning or didn't see on Facebook, there is an order of service for this morning's worship. So if you want to minimize the screen and go over to elmsdalecooperativeministry.com, click on the link at the top of the page that says online worship, and you'll be able to find a PDF version of the order of service. So if you want to follow along today, the words for all the prayers, the words for all the hymns will all be there for you. And so feel free to, to minimize this and then go find that and come back and you can have them side by side on your screen for you this morning. So let's acknowledge place as we begin worship together. We acknowledge that in this place where we worship and where worship is being offered this morning, and where the land on both of our churches are, we are on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Together may we live in peace and friendship. Amen. 
Our call to worship this morning is inspired by Ezekiel 37, 1-4 and John 11, 1-45. These are our readings. So the prophet asks, Can our soul-weary bones live again? O oh God, I know. O oh God, you know. We ask, can we dance again after mourning loss and grief? The response is, O oh God, you know. The gift is sure and unmistakable. God's breath poured out as new life for weary souls. Let us celebrate the gift of God's new life and come to worship God in laughter and in dancing. Let us pray. Compassionate God, the wind of your spirit is the very sign of life for all who long for you. One breath from you and we are rescued from the arid valley of dry bones, given muscles and sinews and joy with which you to praise you, and filled with the holy hope you grant to all your faithful children. Let our whole lives be filled with the life breath of the spirit that was and has been dormant may it burst into bloom and what looks to us to be death may be revealed as but sleep before the emergence of new life together we say amen amen our opening hymn this morning is spirit open my heart just a quick reminder on elmsdale cooperative ministry.com in the online worship section you can find a pdf to today's order of service where you'll find all of the um, all of the words to our hymns let us sing together oh, one quick thing not yet all of us as ministers are, are learning to not only be ministers but also DJs <laughs> so bear with me it appears that I'm disconnected we'll connect again here See if she'll connect for me. Otherwise, we just have the speaker out of my computer. Patience. This all worked 10 minutes ago when I set it all up. So let's see if we'll get it connected again. She's flipping away here. And we'll bring her back online. <laughs> and of course, last night it worked when I plugged it in. So... Thank you for your patience, for the Caring. for dealing with me in this authenticity and realness that is being uh, being Facebook Live. Nothing more humbling. So let's see if we get some sound on here. Doesn't look like it. All right, let's see if we have some sound. If we just play it through here. And we'll power that off and we'll just put the sound through my computer alone. Let's see how we do. Let's see, turn it up. It's not as loud, but that's okay. And restart. A few bumps in the journey. Here we go. Spirit, open my heart to the joy. Place my stony heart with a heart that's kind and tender. All my coldness and fear to your grace I now surrender. Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love me. Spirit, open my heart. Write your love upon my heart. As my love, my goal, my story. In each thought, word, and deed. May my living bring you glory. Spirit, open my heart. To the joy and pain of living. As you love, may I love in receiving and in giving. 
And before we move into our time of confession, let's light our candle this morning. Having prayed and sung for the Spirit to open our hearts this morning to bring new life to these dry bones, we light this candle to remind us of the Spirit of Christ that's inside each and every one of us. That light is with us here this morning. I'll invite you, if you have a candle with you, to light your own. Our prayer of confession is something that we do in church each Sunday, not to feel shame or guilt for being terrible people, but for ourselves to become accountable for the mistakes we make simply because we are human beings and human beings make mistakes. We make mistakes that make us become broken to one another and to ourselves and to God. And so this time of confession is a time for us to repent, which means to turn our faces back to God, the God who's always there waiting to receive us and to love us just as we are. Let us pray. You call us to be your voices in the world, and we stay silent. You call us to be your hands in this world, and we keep them hidden. You call us to be your feet in the world, and we go our own way. When we meet those who are doubting and say nothing, forgive us. When we meet those who need your touch and do nothing, forgive us. When we are called to take up your cross and carry nothing, forgive us. Breathe life into these bones. Bring freedom to these lives that we might declare with heart and soul and voice that you are our Lord and our God. Amen. And receive, my friends, these words of assurance. If God kept track of our mistakes, the harmful things we say and do, the callous ways we sometimes act with one another, the selfishness that we have sometimes when we put our own needs before the needs of others, what chance would we have, the prayer says. But with unfailing love, God forgives us every time. Complete forgiveness that erases our brokenness and heals our, our relationships with one another and with you, God. So be at peace. God forgives us every single time. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn is Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me. So now is our children's time. So I have a children's time for us this morning. I'm going to move my candle so I don't burn my book. So I'm going to put it over here until I bring it back. So I'm going to invite you to grab your kids if they're around and if they want to hear a story from Reverend Kim right now. This is a good time to, to draw them in to have a story. Today's story is called, Where Oh Where is Fergie? Let's check that out together. It's written by Nancy Cox and illustrated by Jerina Martin. One spring day, 
Fergie the Frog and his friend Roger packed a picnic and went to practice long distance swimming in the pond. Swimming in the pond was much better than swimming in the swamp. The shore was sandy, not mucky, and the water was clear all the way to the bottom. Fergie and Roger had a great morning. They raced back and forth. They practiced all the kicks they knew, trying to swim faster and faster, and by lunch, they were very tired. Phew, panted Fergie. Pass me one of those mosquito muffins before I faint. Here, said Roger. He tossed a muffin to Fergie and then opened a bottle of swamp soda. After they had finished eating, the two little frogs settled into the sand for a nap in the sun. As Fergie closed his eyes, Roger yawned and asked, Did you hear something? I thought I heard a voice in the bushes. Likely some robins in that nest up there, murmured Fergie. Go to sleep. So the two friends dozed in the sun. They didn't see two children peek over a log on the shore. Shh, whispered the little boy. Look, there are two more frogs sleeping on the sand. Okay, said his sister. I've got the pail. Let's get these frogs. On the count of three, one, two, three, she yelled, and the children jumped over the log and ran towards Fergie and Roger. On the count of three, the frogs woke up with a start. Jump, Fergie, yelled Roger, and they did, but their legs were tired from racing all morning. It took them three hops to hit the water. Just a picture of some birds on that. Quick, Brenda, there they go, cried the boy. The girl reached into the pond and scooped with her pail. I got one, David, she said, spreading her hand over the pail so the frog couldn't jump out. I guess the other one got away, said her brother, but look, now our first frog, frog has some company. Let's take him home. The children disappeared down the path through the forest, carrying a new little frog in their pail. Another little frog hid in the sand on the bottom of the pail, or in the bottom of the pond, as long as he could hold his breath. And when it was safe, he hopped out of the water. Then he headed for the swamp as fast as his legs could hop. Oh my, look at the two little scared frogs over in the bottom of the pond. And there they are catching them. When he reached the swamp, he saw Freddy and Mother Frog skimming flies for supper. Help, cried Roger, it's Fergie. He's been captured by humans, he's gone. Then Roger burst into tears. Search parties combed the swamp for a week, hunting for Fergie. Crows, raccoons, even water snake helped search, but day after day there was no sign of Fergie. Mother Frog kept croaking, don't give up, he'll come back. By the end of the week, even Mother Frog wasn't so sure. A week after Fergie disappeared, all the frogs gathered around the rock table. Mother Frog put on some mud pie, but no one felt like eating. Poor Fergie, said Freddie. I hope the humans take good care of him. And a tear ran down Freddy's face. Oh. As the frogs were talking about what to do next, there was a loud rustling in the bushes and a voice said, This looks like a good spot. Let's dump it here, Brenda. I don't see why we can't keep them, grumbled another voice. Because they'll all die, just like that old frog. The frogs headed for cover as two children appeared. They emptied a pail of swamp water, minnows, and frogs into the swamp. Race you home, David, said the little girl, and off they ran. Oh, who's that? Fergie is being released, and there's all his friends and his family watching. Slowly, the frogs peeked out of their hiding places. A familiar voice piped up. Hey, can I get a tad? Can a tad get some supper around here? <laughs> All I've had for a week was grass and dead flies. Oh, Fergie, you're safe, Mother cried with joy. Hurry, it's Fergie, shouted the other frogs. They cheered as Freddie helped Fergie wipe mud off his shoe. Welcome home, said Freddie. You look a little pale. I lived in a pail, Fergie groaned. I never want to see another dead fly as long as I can croak. Now pass me the mud pie. <laughs> look, he's being greeted by all his friends. Isn't that wonderful? 
So that's a little story from that I wanted to share you this, with you this morning. It reminds me a lot of the story that we're going to read from the scripture this morning. In that story, Jesus um, has heard about a friend of his who's been sick. And his friend is uh, very sick, and his friend actually dies. And so everyone is wondering what's going to happen, and they're so worried about their friend, and they're worried about Jesus coming. And when Jesus comes, he's really sad. Just like Fergie's friends were really sad, that thinking that they might never ever see him again. But Jesus comes in this story, and it's a story about a miracle. And he comes, and, and he says to his friend who's been buried in a tomb, which is above the ground, and he says, come out. And through the power of God that was in Jesus, his friend comes out and they're reunited again, just like Fergie and his family, and they're all reunited. So Jesus came to show us the power of God and the power of believing in something. And you know what? It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to wonder what's going to happen next. And so many of us are feeling that way right now. Maybe your mom or your dad or your grandmother, whoever you live with, has been worried a lot in the last few days. Just like Mother Frog, you know, was really positive first and then became a little bit worried. You can remind them that God is always watching out for us and God is always taking care of us. And, you know, things will be okay. But right now they might not feel okay and you know what? That's okay too. So just like Fergie and his friends were able to hold on to some hope that things would change, so can you. Oh, isn't that great news? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for hope. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for Jesus who showed us your power. Amen. So you're welcome to stick around for the rest of the service or um, get your parents or your grandparents to uh, sign in and, and get our, or your guardians. I don't know who you're staying with. It could be anybody. You might, you might be with an aunt or an uncle or a foster parent or whoever you're with right now. There is a Sunday School moment that was recorded earlier and it's on our Facebook page. So please find that if you're interested in some Sunday School. You guys have a great day. Okay. I hear my kids coming back in with the dog. So, um, oh, I just realized I had, oh, come back, kids. Come back. There's a children's hymn this morning. This wasn't included last week, so I forgot about it. So we have a children's hymn this morning. It's called Like a Rock, and there's some actions. So it's the actions are like a rock, like a rock. God is under my feet, our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like the river runs to ocean, our home is in God evermore. Will you sing that with me? Let's do that together. Like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like the river runs to ocean, our home is in God evermore more time. Like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like the river runs to ocean, our home is in God evermore. And off you go. Feel free to stay for scripture and sermon and some more singing. And here we are back together. Our scripture this morning uh, are there a little bit longer, so feel free to hang back with your coffee and, and have a listen in. So the first scripture reading is a familiar one to many of you. It's uh, the, the Valley of the Dry Bones from Ezekiel. 
The Valley of the Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all round them. They were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. And he said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am Lord. So I prophesied it as, as I had been commanded, and I prophesied. Suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and the skin had covered them. There was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil, and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This ends the reading from Ezekiel. May God add to our understanding the reading of this Holy Scripture. Our psalm this morning is found in Voices United. Uh, it's at number 853, if you happen to have one of these. The refrain is refrain one. I'm not going to sing it this morning because it's very difficult to sing, but if you know it, feel free to sing it. We will say it, though. Out of the depths I cry to you. My hope is in your promise true. Out of the depths have I called to you, O God. Hear my cry. Let your ears be attentive to my plea for mercy. If you should keep account of what is done amiss, O God, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, we will honor you. Out of the depths I cry to you. My hope is in your promise true. I wait for you, O God. My soul waits, and in your word is my hope. My soul waits for God more than watchers long for the morning more than watchers long for the morning. O Israel, wait in hope, for with God there is love unfailing. With God is great power to redeem, to redeem you, Israel, from all your sins. Out of the depths I cry to you, my hope is in your promise true. Our Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of John. It's from the Gospel of John, and it's the story of Lazarus. It's a longer story, but it's a good one. And I chose to read it from the message, message version of the Bible today, um, a newer version of the Bible written by a gentleman named Peterson, uh, last copyrighted in 2018. It uses some more contemporary language to help us understand the story and maybe help us to find some truth in words that um, are more familiar to our ears. Let us listen. Reading from John 11, verse 1 through to, I think, 48, actually. The reading for today goes to 45. I'm going to read just a little further along. The death of Lazarus. A man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. This was the same Mary who massaged the Lord's feet with aromatic oils and then wiped them with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Master, the one you love so very much is sick. When Jesus got the message, he said, This sickness is not fatal. It will become an occasion to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, but oddly, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed on where he was for two more days. After the two days, he said to his disciples, Let's go back to Judea. 
They said, Rabbi, you can't do that. The Jews are out to kill you. And you're going back. Certain Jews were out to kill him. Because Jesus was Jewish. Jewish. Jesus replied, Are there not twelve hours of a daylight? Anyone who walks in daylight doesn't stumble because there is plenty of light from the sun. Walking at night, he might very well stumble because he can't see where he's going. He said these things and then announced, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I'm going to wake him up. The disciples said, Master, if he's gone to sleep, he'll get a good rest and he'll wake up feeling fine. Jesus was talking about death. Well, his disciples thought he was talking about just taking a nap. Then Jesus became explicit. Lazarus died. And I am glad for your sakes that I wasn't there. You're about to be given new grounds for believing. Now let's go to him. That's when Thomas, the one called the twin, said to his companions, Come along. We might as well die with him. When Jesus finally got there, he found Lazarus already four days dead. Behind, Bethany was near Jerusalem, only a couple of miles away. And many of the people were visiting Mary and Martha, sympathizing with them over their brother. Martha heard Jesus was coming and went out to meet him. Mary remained in the house. Martha said, Master, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask God, he will give you. Jesus said, Your brother will be raised up. Martha replied, I know that he will be raised up in the resurrection at the end of time. You don't have to wait for the end. I am, right now, resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And even everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Yes, Master. All along I have believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who comes into the world. After saying this, she went to her sister Mary and whispered in her ear, The teacher is here, and he is asking for you. The moment she heard that, she jumped up and ran out to him. Jesus had not entered the town, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When her sympathizing Jewish friends saw Mary run off, they followed her, thinking she was on her way to the tomb to weep there. Mary came to where Jesus was waiting and fell at his feet, saying, Master, if you'd only been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her sobbing and the Jews were sobbing, a deep anger welled up with him. And he said, Where did you put him? Master, come and see, they said. And now Jesus wept. The Jews says, Look how deeply he loved him. Others among them said, well, if he loved him so much, why didn't he do something to keep him from dying? After all, he opened the eyes of a blind man. Then Jesus, the anger again welling up in him, arrived at the tomb. It was a simple cave in the hillside with a slab of stone laid against it. Jesus said, remove the stone. The sister of the dead man, Martha, and Martha said, Master, by this time there's a stench. He's been dead for four days. Jesus looked her in the eye. Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Then to the others, go ahead, take away the stone. They removed the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and prayed, Father, I'm grateful that you have listened to me. I know you always do listen, but on account of this crowd standing here, I've spoken so that they might believe that you sent me. Then he shouted, Lazarus, come out. And he came out, a cadaver wrapped from head to toe, and with a kerchief over his face. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him loose. That was a turnaround for many of the Jews who were with Mary. They saw what Jesus did and they believed in him. But some went back to the Pharisees and told on Jesus. The high priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Jewish ruling body. What do we do now? They asked. This man keeps doing things, creating God signs. If we let him go, Pretty soon, everyone will be believing in him, and the Romans will come and remove what little power and privilege we have. This ends the reading from the Gospel of John. May God add to our understanding the reading of this Holy Scripture this morning. Will you pray with me before a time of reflection on our scriptures we heard today? God... May these words that I'm about to speak reach the hearts that need to hear them. 
May the thoughts that I share inspire us to think on you. And God, may all of us who are listening here understand that it's by your grace and your grace alone that we listen, that we hear, that we are moved. God, we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the prophet Ezekiel had a vision. Just heard it moments ago. It's an incredible story, isn't it? So there he is. He's in this uh, valley of dry bones. The Holy Spirit has moved him to this place and the Lord has set him in the middle of this valley. And there he's surrounded by these dry bones and the Lord asks of him, can these dry bones live? And Ezekiel says, Lord, you know. The Lord tells him to preach to these dry bones and tell them that they will live. First sinew and flesh will cover those bones and then the Lord will breathe life into them. And they will live. That word that he will put breath into them in Hebrew is ruha. Ruha. It means breath. It means spirit. It means life force. God will put that into them and then they will live. Like bodies without air die, a person without spirit is not really alive. Ezekiel was a prophet at the time, um, or around 500, I think 596 and, and beyond BC. He was a prophet in exile with the king in Babylon and he was having, um, having these visions and so he was a prophet and a priest at that time. And he was having these visions and sharing the word to bring uh, comfort and challenge to those that were in exile with him. The people had been driven out of Jerusalem and they were living in Babylon and then their temple and their city is destroyed while they're in exile. And the people, the people think that's it, all is lost. Their city and their temple was the center of their faith and without that their faith was lost. And so there they were like the dry bones in the middle of a valley, lost and not knowing uh, where life would come from, they began to turn to other ways of being that really relied on the ways of the world instead of the ways of God. And so Ezekiel preached. Ezekiel preached to bring comfort and hope and the power and the symbol of the resurrection and regeneration of the bones. His promise was new life after life lost. So this promise, again, is echoed and affirmed in the story that we hear from the Gospel of John today. Reading this story in full helps us to understand the universal depth of our suffering. It's a universal depth of suffering that we all experience in the time of sickness and in death. The depths of Jesus' pain as a human being. And most importantly, this story talks to us about Jesus' oneness with God and his deep, full understanding of the power of God. The focus in this story is on new life, and in the relationship between Jesus and the people, and Jesus and Lazarus. The miracle is not one of just healing, as he's been doing up until this time in the Gospel. We've been hearing stories of his miraculous healing. But here he's going to do something different. The miracle is bringing someone back from death. Melinda Quivick is one of the writers that I read this week, and she makes a great point. She said the crowds didn't necessarily believe in Jesus or in his ability to perform miracles. Even Martha and Mary, who deeply believed in Jesus, really didn't understand this idea that Jesus was coming to raise their brother from the dead. They thought that in a distant time, at the end of times, that he would be resurrected to a new life, as all those who believe would be. But Jesus said, no, you don't have to wait till the end of time. You can have it now. They were skeptical, skeptical about any power that Jesus had. Not Martha and Mary, but, but the rest of the crowd about any power that he might actually have. They'd heard of his healings, but they thought, you know, if he really had this power, why didn't he show up here and heal his friend before he even died? They didn't expect Jesus to do such a thing as bring somebody back from the dead. Then the miracle happened by the life-giving grace of God. 
it was received through the voice of Jesus Christ and who stood at the tomb and said, Come out, Lazarus. And that's all it took. It took grace. Miracles don't depend on our belief. They depend on grace. It's an uncomfortable mystery why God wills some miracles and not others. And the greatest miracles of all are not expected. Because you know what? They're not our will. They're the will of God. They are breathed into being by God and God alone. Jesus knew this because he was one with God. He was God with us. People's hearts and minds were changed by what they saw that day. And you know what? The stories of the miracles, they're not easy to believe. I, you know, I'm with you. I read these stories and I go, yeah, that's a stretch. But if they were easy to believe, we wouldn't need faith. If they could be explained by science or reason, we wouldn't need faith. They require something more, these stories. They require faith to believe that anything is possible with God. And you know what? That's not easy, but it's not impossible. This story is important to our faith because it helps us to understand the power of God's grace in our lives and the power of God's grace in the world. Quivick also said, when we are grieving, weary, and lacking hope, it may feel like we are gazing on a valley of full of bones. A merciful God whose power is infinite, however, creates hope just when it is needed. And my friends, hope is needed now. There are so many levels on which this story from Scripture speaks to us. We're bracing ourselves for a worst that is yet to come. We know now that it's not just a matter of weeks but it's going to be a matter of months until we are hopefully in the clear. We're going to miss our Easter services gathering together in our churches. That's the reality. That's the truth of what's happening now. We will still gather as we're gathering here. and We'll still celebrate and we'll still sing our hallelujahs. We'll also miss celebrating birthdays and anniversaries with our friends and our families in the ways that we have before will be denied being able to be at the bedside with our family members who are sick or injured. That's happened to some of us already. We won't be able to have funerals. Not in the same way that we've experienced. Clergy will be denied laying hands on and praying over those who are dying. Some of my friends have experienced that already too. There is a great pain in not being able to be together to feeling separated from one another. You are not alone, and this story teaches us that Jesus understood your grief. Jesus, Jesus understood your pain. Jesus wept at the death of his friend. Even though he trusted in God's grace, he was still sad. He was still upset. He still cried. Our essential workers on the front line of this pandemic are already tired. And many of them are terrified about what's about to happen. For them and for so many of us that watch and worry are feeling a bit lifeless right now. Feeling like we need the spirit breathed into us as well. We might feel like nothing but dry bones rattling around in an unknown wilderness of uncertainness and fear. This is soul-sucking, spirit-draining thinking that's natural right now, but it's not a place where we can stay stuck. We have to trust in the story and the truth of the story of today's promise that God is with us. This promise that when we are hopeless, when all seems lost, that the power of God will bring new life and new energy in hopeless situations. And my friends, the Spirit of God is already at work in this moment. I see it in the mass attendance of daily reflections and meditations and Sunday worships online. Even in this little ministry, in this small community of faith, there are so many people that are peeking in and opening doors and looking for us. 
Because in times of uncertainty, people seek comfort in things of the Spirit. Things of the Spirit, like these times that we're enjoying together. We are so grateful if you found us for the first time, and I'm so grateful for all of you that are part of our community that have been joining us in this way. But I also see the Spirit moving in other ways, in ways that people are sharing the gifts of the Spirit. And the gifts of the Spirit are song and poetry and playing music and dancing and laughing. When the things of the bone and the flesh seem terrifying or even just uncertain, God is waiting to breathe new life into our tired forms. For those of us that claim the name of Christian, we desire to walk in the way of Jesus. To walk the way of Jesus is to love and to love each other, to love God and to love each other. We love each other by keeping each other safe right now. We love each other by staying home. We love each other by reaching out to make sure that no one feels alone. And we love each other by sharing in worship in times like these. We love each other by sharing things that give us comfort and sharing those with other people. To walk in the way of Jesus is to believe that God has the power to reverse destruction, the power to heal brokenness, the power to bring new life to even the driest of bones. My friends, God is faithful. Even in times like these, history proves that again and again and again, God will bring us through this. We are witnesses to God's life-giving grace in these stories that we've heard this morning. And may those help us to patiently wait to witness to how that grace is going to unfold in our time. Because it will. It will. This time is reminding us that church is also not just about our buildings. The flesh and the bones of our churches. The church is the spirit of the people. Breathe into us by God. And as we gather in ways, in new ways like this, and we gather with one another, the Spirit of God is alive in this church. This church who all across the world are meeting in this way now. And in ways that um, are different and new, God breathes new life into us. So people of God, how will God breathe new life into us. How is God breathing the Spirit into your life right now, into the church, into the world? Where are you seeing it? Pray on that. Pray on that and think about that and wonder, will I see it? Will I know it? Do I have to see it to believe it? And if you do, that's okay. The story tells us that today. Sometimes we can't believe anything until we see it with our own eyes. But have faith. God is with us. We are not alone. New life is on its way. Thanks be to God. Amen. So the hymn for after the service, or after the sermon, is Breathe on Me, Breath of God. We'll work harder next week to make sure that we have a working speaker for now. I hope that you can hear a little bit of our accompaniment through my laptop playing over here on the side. I'm going to take a picture after of this setup that I have. Um, and and you'll, you'll have a new understanding of, of what happens in the background for, for this stuff to happen. We're, we're doing all the stuff this morning. And it, it's, I have to say, it is a lot of fun. Um, and it, it gives me great pleasure to be able to share with you in this way and use the gifts that God gave me to help us worship together. Some of those gifts are just being learned. <laughs> All right, let's sing together. Breathe on me, breath of God.
Breathe on me, breath of God. Let's sing, or let's say together our new creed, a new creed of the United Church of Canada, our statement of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God and we are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. So we're going to do something unusual. We started last week. We're going to pass the peace of Christ. We can't do that with those outside of our homes right now, other than to say the peace of Christ uh, in the comments section. I'll invite you to do that. The peace of Christ be with you. The response is usually an also with you. But let's imply that this morning by when we offer it, we are hearing it received back to us. Please offer it to those that are in your space with you, if you have anybody, or in your heart. Just take a moment and close your eyes and think about all your neighbors and your friends and your community and offer the peace of Christ out into the world to them. Love one another as I have loved you, Jesus said. Offering that peace of Christ is a way that we can love each other. So the peace of Christ be with you. And another new way of being is our invitation to the offering. Our offering it can't be about money so much in this moment. However, we have set up uh, an, an opportunity for you to be able to make your, your donation of your collection each week by e-transfer uh, for Riverview United Church. It will be coming to Nine Mile River United Church very soon. But there is an e-transfer um, available and that went out in your e-newsletter. If you don't get our newsletter, they'll be posted on our website soon. But there was a copy of the newsletter posted on Facebook. So the email address for, um, for e-transfers is available there. Um, if, you, if you use that way, that the instructions for all of that are, are found on the newsletter. And I thank you if you're able to make a financial offering at this time. And we understand that that's not possible for everybody right now. And we are holding everyone in our thoughts. So this time of offering is about is about that, is, is, is about um, praying over any of those kinds of donations. But more importantly in this moment is our offering of our commitment to serve one another, our commitment to love one another. So I want to invite you to hold your hands out. And I want you to think about one thing, one thing that you can offer out into the world this week. If you sing and play an instrument, maybe that's your offering out to others. If you have poems to share or funny dancing videos, that's your offering to others. If picking up the phone and having a phone call or setting up a FaceTime gathering with your friends is your offering, place that in your palm of your hands. This is our offering of a commitment to be good to each other, a commitment to love one another in this time. Let's pray. Oh God, accept and bless these gifts which we offer in response to the gracious gift of your life-giving spirit to us. May these gifts in our lives be used to flesh out your love and justice, mercy and peace, as they are revealed in and through Jesus, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Amen. We'll sing together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Now is our time of our prayers of the people or our prayer of intercession. I'll invite you to take a deep breath, to close your eyes. If you have an order of service, there are some lines that you can say with me. But if you don't, that's okay. Just follow along as we pray together. O oh God, who always listens to us, who breathes new life into us, call us forward to resurrection. We are surrounded by a world of dry bones, a world of death and despair, a world where we lose hope in our structures, ourselves, and in you. We pray for this world in need of your word, for all the people in it, for those who lay down their lives, for those who lead. And in our silence, we offer prayers to all those who are on our hearts this day. O oh God, who always listens to us, who brings new life into us, call us forward to resurrection. We are surrounded by people with dried up lives, people unable to see your life past their tears. We pray for this world in need of your healing presence, for those who are imprisoned or alone, those who are sick or injured, those who are grieving. And in our silence, we especially pray for O oh God, who always listens to us, who breathes new life into us, call us forward to resurrection. We are spellbound by those dry bones, terrified of the stink of death, and often too dumbfounded to call forth life in your name. We pray for your people and for your church, and we pray for the courage not just to follow you to death, but to follow you to a new creation. O oh God, who always listens to us, who breathes new life into us, call us forward to resurrection. Call us to follow in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. Come out, Jesus commands, and calls us from the tombs of our existence into the brightness of a new day. Come out, Jesus cries, and unbinds us from the chains of our past. Come out, Jesus calls, and entices us into a world filled with grace and possibility. So go out. Go out in spirit into a world that needs our life, our breath, our spirit. Go out into the world that needs the spirit of God carried on our lips and in our loving arms. Go out into the world to live as God's resurrected, resurrected people. Go out and go on the breath of God's holy wind. It's funny we're saying go out and come out and we're all stuck in our homes. So for us that are isolated in our homes, stay in, but go out in spirit. Go out in all the ways that you can from this place. For those of you that do have to go out, those essential workers that are in the front lines of this in so many different ways, when you go out, go out filled with the Spirit, filled, out, filled knowing that we are all praying for you, that you are going with God, you are not alone as you go out to do your work at this time. So we're going to finish with a closing hymn, and then I have a closing blessing for you. So don't, don't leave just because I'm singing again. Um, but <laughs> allow yourself, if you have the words, to sing along with me, and then stay tuned for a final blessing. So this is uh, Spirit God Be Our Breath.
from More Voices 150. Spirit God, be our breath, be our song, blow through us, bringing strength to move on. Our world seems inward, defensive, withdrawn. Spirit God, be our song. Patient God, soothe our pride, calm our fear, comfort us when we know you are near. We grow more certain, our vision is clear. Patient God, calm our fear. Loving God, be our voice, be our prayer. Reaching out, joining hands as we share. We seek your guidance through friendship and care. Loving God, be our prayer. Spirit God, be our breath, be our song. Blow through us, bringing strength to move on. Through change, through challenge, we'll greet the new dawn. Spirit God, be our song. So join me in this closing blessing. It's a blessing from Jan Richardson's book, The Painted Prayer Book. It's titled, Lazarus Blessing. The secret of this blessing is that it is written on the back of what binds you. To read this blessing, you must take hold of the end of what confines you must begin to tug at the edge of what wraps around you. It may take long and long for its length to fall away, for the words of this blessing to unwind in folds about your feet. By then, you will no longer need them. By then, this blessing will have pressed itself into your waking flesh, will have passed into your bones, will have traveled every vein until it comes to rest inside the chambers of your heart that beats to the rhythm of benediction and the cadence of release. That's my blessing for you, my friends. May you experience the life of the Spirit this day and every day, and especially in the days ahead. When you feel hopeless, trust in the God who is coming to bring new life to the hopeless situations. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. Love you.